A big part of my process and a big part of the reason it works is because I'm really big on making sure a horse's nervous system is well regulated and well regulated around us. You know, in the wild, a horse will be relaxed, they'll be grazing, and let's say something shows up that could be a danger, so they become curious. What is that? Oh, it's a danger. They will then go from relaxed to fight or flight, so they'll run, and then they usually they'll outrun the danger, and then they their nervous system regulates and goes back to relax. The only time that doesn't happen is if they run and they get caught and the predator catches them and, you know, bites them on the back of the neck and holds them down or whatever. Usually then they'll go into that freeze mode. It's the same with humans. Like if you have a car accident or something, you go into shock. It's the same thing. Um, and so with any animal in the wild, a prey animal, if it gets caught by a predator, it goes into like basically flop, freeze kind of mode. And then... It either gets eaten or it kind of wakes up and gets away, runs away and go back, goes back through that fight or flight mode back to relaxed, okay? And with a lot of horses, especially sensitive ones, they can kind of spend quite a bit of time around humans in a state that looks like it's, it's relaxed, but it's not. They're just kind of holding their breath. And I started a five-year-old Andalusian mare a couple of years ago, and she was one who could be very easily anxious or very easily go inside herself and pretend everything's okay. And with her, I spent a lot of time making sure that her nervous system was well-regulated around humans. And I found with her, when she was around people, she kind of just held her breath and said, yes, I'm fine, I'm fine, but she wasn't really fine. And so I've recently just got her back after two years. She's been hanging out for two years. Her owner hasn't done really anything with her. And she's back here. I'm going to keep her for quite a while. And this video I'm about to show you is some of the very, very, very simple things I do that are part of that well-regulated nervous system. And it's slow and it's boring, but and it doesn't take any skill, it just takes patience. But it, this, this part I'm gonna show you right here is probably the most important part of the process. And I don't mean you do this and that's all you gotta do. But if, you, if I do this in the beginning, before I start training on them, the training is actually completely different as you'll see by uh, some of the stuff I'll show you in this video. So for me, the most important part of training horses is nervous system regulation. I think a lot of people spend a lot of time developing techniques to train horses that are not in a very good nervous system place. And if you look at this Andalusian mare here, if you look at her bottom lip here, it's got a bit of twitching going on. She's following the camera around. But I'll, I'll just stay here and we'll see if we can get a shot of it. But her bottom lip has got this vibrating twitching going on. And I think you can see it right there. It's very subtle. But what I feel is happening with horses when they're doing that is they have been in hay sweetness. They have been in some sort of sympathetic nervous system state or a shutdown state. So the blood has drained away from the muzzle. You know, if they go into fight or flight, the blood drains away from the muzzle and goes to the muscles because they need to escape. If they go into like freeze mode, and see so there's some twitching on the side of her muzzle right there too. Let's just see, there's some very subtle twitching there. Um, they go into, say, freeze mode, the blood drains away from their muzzle and it goes to their internal organs in case they get, you know, in case they get... Uh, a puncture wound or whatever they want to try to keep as much blood around those uh, vital organs as possible but what I found is when they do this twitching like this man you can see her bottom lip right here having a good old pop right there okay when they do that they it's almost like they're they're used to being stuck in low level um, states of anxiety now right now and she looks up there i'm going to look up there you can't see me looking up there but i am and then her focus changes so i'm looking over where she's looking and then her focus changes and she's back over here but this whole twitching thing the thing i want to do is wait for her to have a lick and a chew you know that tells me the blood is trying to return to her muzzle 
she, her, her nervous system's trying to come back online the way it's supposed to, and it's not happening yet. And so there's no, for me, interrupting that, asking her to do anything while that's happening. And there's our lick and chew right there. Very good. So her, me asking her to do anything while that's, that twitching's going on, is just going to basically short circuit that thing once again. And this mare here, I started her a couple of years ago. I've only just got her back again. I started her a couple of years ago. And during the training, that was something I worked on a lot. I don't mean worked on as in did anything, like you saw right there. If I asked her to do something and then when I stopped, she was twitching, I waited until she was done twitching before I asked for anything else. I waited for her to have a lick and a chew. And my first trot on her, she trotted around and stretched over her back and hung her head down and looked like a much broker horse you know, much older, more experienced, more educated horse on her first day trotting, which I think was about day three. And then the first day I canted her, she canted around, hung her head down, stretched over her back, um, looked like a much more educated horse on her first day cantering under saddle. And I, what I put it down to is the fact that I spent so much time getting her nervous system regulated. And I think a lot of people are riding horses who have a bit of a dysregulated nervous system, meaning they are not perfectly relaxed when you're teaching them to do stuff. And there's a bit of a sigh going to come here in a minute. And so then you have to develop a lot of techniques to try to overcome that. But I've, since I've been doing stuff this way, I've found that they're so much easier. And, you know, like I said, when she trotted, the first day trotting, she looked like a more educated, look at all this stuff going here right now. Um, when the first day she trotted, she looked like a much more educated horse. And the first day under saddle she canted, she looked like a much more educated horse. And like the first day I ever sat on her, I got on her and I sat there until she had a lick and a chew. And I think it was seven minutes that I sat on her before she had a lick and a chew, before I actually did anything. And I think those little things are the important things. And, and this is why we like to say you are the best person to train your horse because for the most part, it's just being patient and waiting for stuff is the thing that you need. It's not like you need a better technique or a, you know, it's not like you need a different technique or a handful of techniques or you've got to be super talented. You know, for me, the key to getting her to, to ride around on a horse trot and canter looking like a much more experienced horse was the fact that I first got her relaxed at the start of the whole process and then all the way through the process every time I asked her to do something I ensured that when I stopped I waited for her to be completely relaxed before I asked for anything else and now Lick and Chew's probably coming here in a minute she's really getting close to it now um, but that for me that's that's the important part and the other part is taking your time like one of the things I do with horses when I, um, in preparation um, in preparation for them to be saddled and ridden is I get them up beside me on the fence, you know, I, I touch them from above, I rub my foot on from above, and I put my leg over them from above, and then I will, and here's our lick and shoe going to come right there. Very good. It's a big old one too. Look at that big old yawn, rolls the third eyelid back. Big old yawn, rolls the third eyelid back again. This is... This is just the holding space part of this thing. Look at the big old yawn right there. Very cool. Very, very cool. This mare has a tendency, she can either be very outwardly anxious or very easily go inside herself too. Um, so when I first, there's another big one. Very good. So when I first sat on her off the fence, the first I actually put my leg over her and sat on her, she scooted away. Oh yes. And I did that. That's all I worked on for eight days she's beautiful isn't she um i worked on that for eight days before she allowed me to sit on her off the fence without scooting over and if i had to like shorten that up like oh, i don't have time for this stuff i'm just going to get on her she'd have been an anxious scooting running sideways jumping here jumping there sort of a horse but by the time i got to riding her she was totally good with all the parts and like i said like you saw she you know she rode around like a much you're a sweetheart, aren't you? Like a much um, more educated horse. And so well, I'm just out here today. She's just come back a few days ago. And I'm just out here not really doing anything with her. I haven't asked her to do anything. 
um, I walked up to her and noticed that, that she started twitching when I walked up to her. And so I just waited for that twitching to stop. And now I'm just walking around and she's just going wherever I'm going. Something I want you to watch here. When I walk across here, watch your inside hind foot will step up and across towards your outside front foot. Okay. That's when, see the bend in her body? I'll do it this way. So your inside hind foot steps up and across and up and across. She's got a bend in her body. They have that bend in their body when they are doing it because they want to and not doing it because out of obedience. And she's just kind of connected with me and following me around. But anyway, that's a, I just thought I'd show you guys a little bit of a little bit of um, something that's a lot of the part of my process. And like you saw when we were standing over there, I didn't do anything. Um, but that's the thing. It's sometimes it's not about being a human doing. Sometimes it's about being a human being.